Alright, hello friends. How are we doing? Hello, hello, good evening. Let's see who is here. <laughs> Jordan and Van Dusen. Hello, how's it going? One Drunk Man, Tanuki, hello. Porsche Boy, hello, hello. Nine Walker, hello. Nuclear Nachos, hello. Who Breezy, how's it going? Hey, Ratty, thank you so much for the 19 months. I'm doing well, thank you. All right, so today is a very special stream, as you guys know. Um, we are building a palmetto. And it's not just any palmetto. It's a palmetto that was made to be auctioned, to be sold in an auction, which is currently live actually on eBay. If you do exclamation auction, you can find the link um, for Ukraine. So I believe the current bid that I last saw is currently at 1125 US dollars um, but maybe that will change over the next four days uh, that the auction is available so actually I can show you what the auction looks like um, well actually let's see Okay, so here you can see the auction page, uh, 11.25, and there are some photos that I provided, and we're going to be building this bad boy. Appreciate this so much. Oh, Nick Delard, how are you? I'm Ukrainian myself and unfortunately I have family there. Oh, I see. It's just nice to see the world coming together from my home. Yeah, so it's it's been really encouraging to see how like the internet and like all these networks that are, you know, have connected the world over the past, you know, several decades ha like has really like shown so much impact in in an event like this one, right? Um, where like we are seeing, you know, conflict that could potentially have like, you know, worldwide repercussions and to see people coming together to like support one another is, is, is really, it's really encouraging and it's really something that's like, you know, very impressive. So all right. So let's let's get started, shall we? All right. So here's our box, which I did open already, but I just repackaged so that I could show you what it looks like all, all together. rather strong all right so we have a piece of foam here and we have all of our parts so these are Gadron KS3 milky yellow pro switches um, basically these are um, some of the new line of Gadron's uh, milky switches uh, KS3 just to designate like I, I think it was like a certain material mix that they used for their plastic and yeah, and so basically this is just a, um, this is just like one of their new line of switches and these are really smooth. Um, these are super smooth, super nice. Um, so I'm pretty excited to build this actually. All right. So we have the switches and then we have our O-ring. We have some stickers. That's the Carolina Mech sticker, Van Dusen sticker. Um, so we 
already have our o-ring here which I'm just gonna set aside for now and then we have I'll leave the stickers alone but uh oh we have stabs provided oh I thought I had to provide stabs okay well that's that's great uh, we have some screws for the daughter board the daughter board itself and then well we do have stabs okay great and the daughter board cable of course I'll leave this as is for now and here we have a black aluminum plate so I believe this is um, anodized aluminum has Van Dusen's logo over there so this was made in the USA uh, Van Dusen is located in South Carolina uh, and so is Carolina Mech they are in a partnership um, to make keyboards and sell them um, but and the Palmetto was their first um, their first product that they released together uh, as far as a keyboard is concerned and they also have like you know, Carolina Mech also sells things like FR4 plates for you know 60% and so on um, but yeah uh, so this is the 60% plate that we're going to use for the Palmetto. And here we have a H60 Tiny PCB. So this was daughterboard compatible because it has a JST port. And then we go to the next layer, take off this foam. And then here we have a keycap. Um, this keycap was um, especially made by Van Dusen. Um, they said that they weren't particularly happy about how it came out, um, but I think it's cool still nonetheless. It's uh, an aluminum escape keycap. It has the escape engraving, which is pretty nice. Um, and basically it's, you know, blue and gold um, sort of to symbolize, you know, Ukraine. Um, but very nice, uh, basically cherry profile R1 keycap. Oh, that's interesting. Uh, so that's how the supports look on the bottom. And I believe there you can see the logo and, you know, basically USA as well uh, to denote that it was made here in the States. But yeah, very nice. Um, actually, the line's really clean on the on the division there for the color, but yeah, I like it. All right, so we will set that aside too. And we finally have our keyboard. What happened to the music? Kind of like stopped. Three D printed titanium. There you have it. I actually didn't know. Um, I should have asked, but I I actually didn't ask. So now you have it. It's a three D printed titanium um, keycap, which is pretty cool. Um, I mean, you can definitely see the three D print lines. Uh, you know. If I like zoom in here, and like you can definitely see that you know the print lines. But uh, nonetheless, the escape engraving on it is very nice, and it's textured at the sides. And excuse my my very scuffed fingers, but yeah. This was anodized and clear coated. I see. Very cool. Yeah, three D printed metal. Uh, I think that might be the first time I actually see 3D printed metal kind of stuff other than like uh, I've seen some stuff for like circuitry and um, Like just like random things, but definitely not in this particular context like keyboards and such Keycaps and so here we have our case. This is our Palmetto uh, You probably saw some of the photos I can like zoom in to show you a little bit up close here there it says Palmetto. There's a number 14. I'm actually not sure what, what the 14 means. Maybe it's just a serial number. Uh, maybe not, I'm not sure. Um, and it's a brass weight that goes through. Uh, you can see our daughter board cable channel here. So the daughter board, uh, I mean the daughter board will be here and then the JST connector, the cable it will be over here and the connector over here. But very nice, this little uh, kink at the uh, in the channel is so that the cable stays put in place um, so but this blue is very nice um, it does have a rougher texture uh, on the inside uh, compared to the outside uh, but the outer part like it's very smooth has like a, a little bit of a matte sort of texture to it 
um, but uh, looks really sweet. And this is what the back of the Palmetto looks like. So what's special about the Palmetto is this particular side profile and this machining. Uh, it's very purposeful and it's very delicately done here to show these lines from the machining and then you know, it goes all the way around, all the way through until it like, merges here to this one singular line that's round at the bottom. And here is our coat of arms engraving to symbolize Ukraine and of course it says Carolina Mech, Palmetto, Van Dusen. Anyway, yeah, very cool. So this is a unicorn, uh, like the TGR Xinga unicorn style kind of case where basically it is tray mount compatible. Uh, it would be tray mount compatible if it had the standoffs, but since it doesn't, it is only O-ring uh, mount compatible. So basically it mounts the same way of, as the O-ring style of the Singa unicorn would. Um, so that's pretty much what it is. So um, let's get started. Um, so I guess first of all, I'm just going to start by testing our PCV. And of course, by just checking that everything is working because I haven't opened this yet. What's the little nub in the middle for this? Um, maybe it's a spacer, just, I mean, I don't know actually. I don't know what the little nub is for. I don't know what the, it's, maybe it's like to, to, hmm, I don't know, it's very flat. I mean, it's very, uh, it's very short. It's very short, but maybe it's for something to, for the purpose of production? I'm not sure. I don't know what the little nub is. It's just to prevent the PC from bottoming out. But I feel like the, but, but couldn't it happen anywhere on the sides too? Like the nub, it's so little at the, in the center, or near the center rather. That can I bottom out elsewhere too though? Maybe that's enough, but I don't know. I mean the PCB does sit kinda low, so I understand. Oh, look at that. We actually I actually think the daughter board's <laughs> screws are, are also star coated. Um but, okay, so daughter board here and let's plug this guy in what about the cutout in the brass way oh you mean why is this like this so the reason we have this like windowed brass weight in a way is because in order to like if you wanted to take out the if you wanted to take out the um the assembly from the inside right like once you've once you've already put it in uh, you can take off the weight and basically push it from underneath and you know the PCB will pop out this way uh, That's that's one way you use that. Oh Just the one spot you mean this oh, it's because it's engraved It's engraved it says Palmetto 14 Yeah It's just a way to engrave something on there. Yeah Yeah, it's like a, an extra touch, so that's kind of cool. An extra personal touch, I guess, is what I should say. All right, so let's test this guy out. Got my cable here. Okay, this doesn't have RGB, so shouldn't expect it to turn on like that. So, Professor Parsons asks, I have some NK Silk Olivias coming in tomorrow. Are they ready to go or do they need additional lube? Um, technically, they are ready to go. Um, I think uh, you might um, want to, you know, you might want to try it stock first. Try it stock first, see how you feel about it. Um, and then if you would like to further lube them, do so. Um, it's easier to lube kind of like as you go as in like adding is easier in terms of lube than removing So try it stock first and then go from there 
but they are pretty smooth. They're 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 supposed to be loot with two five grade zero, um, you know, from from the get go. So. Alright, so we're going to do full backspace today with a 7U bottom row. Professor Parsons, thank you so much for the Prime Gaming sub and split right shift. And the rest is fine. Okay. Any good kits for under 200? Uh, there are kits for under 200. Um, if you look on thoughtstock.com, uh, actually, if you do exclamation in stock, you, uh, you'll get a link. And if you go to the keyboard section, there are some kits uh, on there that might be available for under 200. But I believe like the Bakaneko 60, for example, is a kit that's available under 200. The NK65 entry edition. Um, and um, yeah, some some other some other keywords have availability for under two hundred dollars. Um, the only thing is, you should consider that you know for that budget, you also need to purchase switches and um, and uh, and other things. So like keycaps, you know, and whatnot. So um, yeah, like if you purchase like uh, some of the NK sixty five bundles, those come with keycaps and switches and everything, cable, like everything that you you'll need. Um, but in some other kits, that won't be the case. So you just might want to check what's what's uh, what's in the contents. All right. So Coolio, everything's working fine. How can I go battleship win? <laughs> All right, so for this, we're gonna need four stabs, I think. So we need shift, enter, backspace, and spacebar. And we should be using clip-ins, which we do have. So we have, uh, let's see, one, two, and then I have some more here, so that's perfect. All right, so I have three, and this. Okay. Okay. So we're ready to go here. So let's start lubing our stabs first. So we need to clip the stabs, uh, clip the little legs from the from the cherry inserts. Maybe I'll just use this piece of foam to hold things. NK65, hello worth if you can spend more. Been my daily driver for two years now. Yeah, I, I personally think the NK65 is really a banging deal uh, because it comes with everything that you'll need, right? So I think that's the best part of the NK65. All right. Good day, Peaches. How are you? Um. That artisan holder with your badge is sick? <laughs> Thanks. Thank you, thank you. Hey, Jiren, hello. How's it going, buddy? So if there's any folks who are new to keyboard build streams and this sort, you know, you can always ask questions if you have any doubts. Um, I can definitely explain the process as we go. But otherwise, you know. 
this is a pretty open and friendly place I think and people in chat also especially the regulars probably know a lot about keyboards some people probably keep up better than I do with keyboard news so hey mr. Juan 18 months thank you so much my brother how are you do you have a good day today I know that uh, life's been kind of kind of happening for you you doing well I assume mouse from Leonardo yes it is yeah it is I actually bought this aftermarket though like I bought it from somebody else who commissioned it I didn't commission it myself um, but yeah they gave me a good deal for it um, so I I purchased it like that nice to see a community uh, contributing lots for a good cause yeah yeah I do agree I do agree with that peaches it's it's been really cool to see I mean uh, for those who don't know um, there's been a lot of different events and sales you know all kinds of things for um, providing humanitarian aid and charity to Ukraine uh, for for the ongoing conflict and um, yeah so like there's been artisan makers who have made like raffles where like the proceeds or the revenue basically goes towards that there's been um makers putting you know keyboards from their personal collection uh for auction or for sale uh to also um contribute funds and so on um yeah like there's some notorious ones there's like the unicorn the, the stainless steel unicorn uh from singa uh there's like you know of course there's this palmetto right here uh, there is, I believe, um, there's like a TJR, Alice and Polycarbonate, I think. Um, I've also seen a lot of uh, keycap makers do events. So I've seen, um, yeah, I mean, there's there's been a lot of like Sodi cabs did a, did a sale, Alpha keycaps did a sale. Yeah, a lot of makers have also been coming together to, to organize things uh, for, for, for Ukraine. And so it's been really nice to see. There's been community-led, like community um, folk-led efforts too, where people have also like sold arts and keycaps, like put them for, for like silent auction and things like that. Today was a good day. Thank you for asking. I'm glad. I'm glad it was a good day overall. The week is almost over, which I don't know if it's a relief for you guys. Um, but I think it is for me at least. Yeah. Um, uh, tomorrow is Friday, which is great. I'll be able to use my It's Friday command as usual. But yeah, tomorrow is also a, a special day for me. So um, I will be uh, probably taking off this weekend um, just to sort of be off the grid for a little bit. But yeah. So I was actually, um, I, I actually, um, this kind of came together, uh, you know, just recently, the this Palmetto, you know, build. Um, I like, I actually wasn't sure if I was going to, you know, manage to, to do this build tonight. Uh, because I, I do have like a lot going on right now. Like I kind of like outside of outside of keyboards basically like keyboards and like other stuff you know and I just didn't want to rush or or, or, or you know make it make it difficult for everybody um, but yeah somehow I managed to finagle some things around and it just worked out um, enjoy your weekend thank you so much what's up you charitable son of a gun what's up nachos Oh, no, no, it's not a problem. I mean, I'm happy to. Any plans for next week? Um, yeah, um, so I actually am planning on... Oh, I am sure... <laughs> I mean, funnily enough, I actually am planning on figuring out my taxes for this year. I mean, for this past year, for 2021. Uh, gonna do it while I actually have some time to do so. 
Uh, I do have some work as usual, like I do have some work set out for myself to do that I, you know, have to continue doing. Um, but uh, technically next week I am like off from some responsibilities, so it's kind of nice. But yeah, um, I'll get to relax a little bit too, so that'll be, that'll be good. Just evade them. That would be great, but it's it's hard to evade them even if you wanted to. You need a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, skills, I suppose, to do that successfully. Otherwise, it will it would backfire quite severely. And especially if you don't really have the funds to deal with the consequences. Not just money, but also obviously like, you know, you could go to, you could, you could get criminal charges. Tax is not very T word. I do agree. Except, except it is a T word itself, but it's not the T word. So yes, not T wordy. But I do want to get ahead and do those like earlier than rather sooner than later because yeah uh it just kind of looms over my head and kind of stressing me out so better do them before like they're due which is normally like april 15 right so i risk listening to diego's course on tax evasion <laughs> imagine my knowledge of taxes is actually quite poor uh which is kind of unfortunate never really had interest and I don't think I ever will to be quite honest with you if there's any one thing about management that I don't really know much about I think yeah like taxes and accounting that kind of stuff is what I what I really don't know about like about how the world works in that sense it's kind of beyond me don't know beyond like just the basic stuff basic percentages things like that <laughs> just hire peaches to do your taxes i mean if she knew the law here in the u.s i'm, I'm sure i'm sure that that would be feasible but the problem is you become an accountant uh and you you know you're you're you become an accountant for that particular place that you practice so it doesn't work it doesn't work that way Have you figured out what set you're going to put on this? Uh, no, I have not. I have not figured out what set I'm going to put on this yet. We do have some options, of course. Like we do have some beige options with blue, like CRP Arabic, I think has blue on it. Uh, we do, we can, we can go with like, I don't know, GMK Lux that has like gold yellowish color. Although it is like black or, or like a very dark gray base. Uh, there's like Nautilus, which is actually like blue and yellow, but it is a darker blue and it's a bit different. Um, yeah, there's there's some other sets here and there that we have options with. Striker, yeah, Striker, there's that too. Oh, Mix, Striker, and Serica. Mmm. Yeah, I guess there's that, but uh, they would look at a little odd because of the legends. Specifically, the legends being a different color from from each other. That would be, I think, the biggest hurdle. How often do you relube your stab wires? Not too often, I would say. Um, I don't really have a time frame that I can give you. I think it's just whenever I need to which doesn't seem that often for me like occasionally i'll just you know bring a syringe like you know use a syringe here like you know i have the syringe here to just you know lift the lift the lift the stabilizer insert and just you know put a little bit and you normally it's like a very tiny bit like it's not even you can't even notice like you barely notice it there so yeah not not much not often and not much I think doing a pretty decent job the first time is what's going to prevent a lot of headache later on, but it, it you will eventually have to re-lube some of your stabilizers, yes. Uh, but, but I would say it doesn't happen as often for me because I am kind of 
used to lubing stabs so for me it's like a little rarer also on oh, sure and redeem push-ups i can maybe do them do them later although i'm kind of a bit tired today Do you see the GMK minimal delivery at Omnitype? Yeah, very unfortunate. Um, I do know that I do. I did see the the pictures and whatnot about uh, basically, you know, if, for those who didn't read or didn't see it, basically the TLDR is that um, you know FedEx is the one who delivers their freight for from GMK and um, you know on route between like the airport where they you know it lands uh, to to Omnitype's warehouse basically like you know they're, they're, they they you know like the packages get stationed like the pallets get stationed at the FedEx warehouses in between and apparently FedEx probably left it out and you know it got wet at some point and so by the time they like you know they when when they dropped it off at Omnitype Central essentially they were all soaked um and so there were some stories videos photos about uh all like hundreds hundreds and hundreds of these gmk sets soaked like the trays and the band rolls you know they're made out of paper essentially so you know they're all mushy soggy basically you know disintegrating so yeah you can refund it no it's fine it's not a big deal I want to replace my U4s with silent linear switches. Any sweet recommendations? Mm, I've tried like some of the silent, like I've tried like silent alpacas, which I personally liked. Um, I've also used like, um, I remember trying silent inks ones. Uh, I don't really remember what I felt about them, how I felt about them. I mean, there's all, also the silent uh, switches from Gazoo, right? I actually don't remember what they're called anymore. Are those also U4Ts or like Vobas? I actually don't know what they're called, but yeah, there's like the silent ones from them too. I think the key thing about silent switches is that you need to, like lubing them actually quiets them down a significant amount, especially like if you, you should probably like, you know, back lube or whatever your springs and you know, the slider. That'll quiet it down like a very, very good amount. Boba gums, thank you. How did they get the, the these things wet anyway? Oh, very easy. Um, I mean, literally, it's a pallet, right? And you know, the pallet gets transported. They transported it, and then, you know, in between, like, you know, so, sometimes you have to, you don't transfer it right, like, right away to wherever the destination is, right? There's checkpoints in between. So at one of those checkpoints, they must have had rain, and they let them actually get wet. And then, so by the time that they arrived to to their destination, in this case, Omnitype, Omnitype's like warehouse, you know, they were already soaked. I actually can't believe that FedEx isn't liable for the damage. I don't. We don't know that. I mean, but I mean, I could bet. I could bet. $500 that they're not gonna do jack shit because that's what FedEx is like FedEx is literally is literal dog shit It's like literally the worst The worst courier I've ever used in my life. I even prefer like The Mexican National Post Office Service, which is pretty slow by the way to FedEx in the US. It's so bad. FedEx is like actually the worst. I, I can't, I can't possibly try Canada Post. I think FedEx is still worse. I think I would still prefer Canada Post or Royal Mail in UK over FedEx here in the US or elsewhere maybe too. It, it's just really bad. They've been always unreliable. They've always caused damage on packages and they don't like hold themselves accountable for it. I've had delays. I've had things like, oh, we were unable to deliver your package to, to your door or whatever. And then the courier, I one time I actually had like, you know, there was like camera, like, you know, CCTV and stuff. The courier didn't even ring the bell. 
they just kind of came close and then just left. They're like, kind of looked and then they just left. They didn't, they didn't leave a note, they didn't leave the package, just left. And then it's like, and then you get the notification saying, hey, uh, come and pick it up at the, at, at our, you know, FedEx store that is located like 5.5 miles away from you. I'm like, that takes me like an hour to get there. I'm not gonna do that. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, that's just how bad they are. Or it's like, oh, signature delivery. And then they leave it. Without a signature. What? It's, and you know, like you can sign those off, by the way. Like, DHL does it, right? Where there is signature release and you can actually pre-sign those online or on like, you know, like on the web browser or whatever, you know, you can you can pre-sign those online and you know you, you can release them under your permission. But yeah, I've had that happen a lot too. DHL is pretty good uh, for DHL Express International is very good, yes. Uh, specifically their their like quick international package service is very very fast and very very efficient for sure i mean I, i've definitely had the best experience with them for international packages big or small just in general i remember the tweet from that dude that ordered a door online the courier bent it yeah uh, I mean, I've heard of so many stories of like people ordering like, you know, their like, uplift desk, for example, and the, uh, and the, obviously the wooden top would arrive damaged. And you know, like you can't even blame the like the people sending it because it's actually just like lack of care on the courier side too, where they like let it, let, like you know, let it get beaten up on you know on route, like somewhere in the middle, slam things or like kind of drop things on the ground. I mean, generally there's a sense of irresponsibility that comes out a lot. In the curious, I mean, obviously you can't apply that generally. Like, not every single person who works at the, at that particular company is bad or anything like that. It's more so that the overall service level has been pretty bad, for at least in my experience, for FedEx. But yeah, I mean, I've had things like go from here to Dubai in a day and a half uh things from here to korea in a day uh from here to singapore in two and a half days something like that or australia also two and a half days three days i think with dhl uh so yeah i mean like uh so efficiency is possible you know it's it's more so that a lot of these couriers uh, have to take have to cut cut those corners, or they do just in general because uh, you know their structure is just not efficient efficient enough for that. Think they could bend the board? Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, drop it enough times or in like in, in the exact wrong way. <laughs> Drag it across the floor, I don't know. Oh, Iwane, thank you so much for the t uh, nine months. Can we make our sub, <laughs> sub baby the T word? <laughs> But you already have a T word baby, basically, which is your your company, your shop. That's your baby. Are you are you saying you're going to give that up for this one? <laughs> Just kidding. 
Is it the sibling? Anyway. DH DHL Express said it was going to take weeks to ship my KVD fans order a while ago and took two days from China to Ohio. I was still on vacation when I arrived. Yeah, I mean, that does happen. Yeah, I mean, sometimes they do overestimate just in case so that because it is easier for, I mean, at least the rate of customer service uh, calls is going to be much higher if you underestimate the delivery and and then say like, oh, it's delayed or something rather than overestimating and saying like, oh, you know, it's, it's going to take five days uh, and, and it instead makes it in three. Normally, people will not complain about fast service, so. Jackie's Boards, hello. Lightning, I was lucky enough to win the 265 Ocean Grey. What keycap set would you recommend to go with it? Uh, It's a pretty uh, neutral tone, so anything gray? You know, Dolch, Modern Dolch, Oblivion, Muted, anything beige, white on black. Um. You know, there's there's so much. There's so much that would go fine with it because it's such a neutral colorway. ASCII, yeah, like there's a lot. There's a, there's quite a lot. Heck, even oh, hyperfuse would be actually pretty good. Hyperfuse tends to go pretty well with uh like um different tones of gray. You could do like classic blue, for example. GMK classic blue would also be pretty nice. Anything like blue or on, on that side would also work pretty well because the gray is sort of bluish. It has a little bluish, bluish hint to it. So yeah, like in different lighting, it might look bluer than gray. So. Oh, our stock. Hey. Okay. Can you? Oh, put the borderlands back. Yeah, sure, I can do that. in the background <laughs> yeah will any of your roommates join the auction oh you mean you mean uh you mean uh no no jd or gatoron i don't know they wouldn't tell me about it probably because they're you know if if they knew if if i knew that they were you know rich and famous I would probably, um, you know, steal that fame. Just kidding. Uh, but I, I would, I would ask a favor. I would ask for a sponsorship. JD sponsorship, please. JD, please sponsor me. Hello, JD. My name is Lightning from Lightning Keyboards. I have a uh, IG with. Um, uh, I think I have uh, 12,000 followers and my growth rate is blah bitty blah bitty blah. I can promote, uh, you know, promote, promote whatever on, on, on dn.nft.eth.fputin. Or something. 
<laughs> JD pay my student debt initiative? Yeah, or J J JD loan forgiveness program. Let's go. Make sure to ask JD for free stuff for the exposure. Yes, free keyboard, please. Free keyboard, please. Hey, can we do a collab? You can send me free products. Here's my address. JD, sorry, I was going to sell like you, but you don't have enough followers. <laughs> true smoge. True, true. I probably don't. Thinking of getting a clear uh, polycarp obliterated 75 from can keys with gat milky yellows. Any keycap suggestions? Ooh, clear polycarp. I think anything, I personally like pairing uh, lighter key sets with polycarp cases because the like when the light kind of hits the case, it really kind of brightens up the overall like the overall look of the board. And um, I personally think that brighter key sets go really well with um, with uh, with polycarp cases. Yeah. So we engraved some of the weights. This was originally an extra, then we saw the mech market post and decided to throw in. Oh, I see. Oh, the, the, the like number. I see, I see. That makes sense. All right, nice thing about clip-ins is that they just, well, clip in. Very easy to work with them. They just clip right in like that. No need to use any screws or anything like that to hold them in place. Just make sure that they're nice and properly placed with the clips. And then let me double check this though. I think it's this way here. Yeah. Okay. We do still have to test our stabs though. Interesting, I have no taste with keycaps, so thanks, no worries. But yeah, I mean, anything neutral, brighter colors tend to go really well with uh, with clear polycarb or polycarb in general, even if it's frosted. So if you're already purchasing from Canon Keys, uh, some of the brighter toned, nice PBT sets, for example, would be a pretty good purchase, in my opinion. Nice and smooth. These these actually are pretty darn smooth. Even stock, they look very smooth. Uh, there's there's a few stock ones over there. Help! I can't decide what switches to use for my first build. Will you actually build with whatever I tell you? Then I'll tell you. I think you should just get like alpacas or NK silks or something like that. They're smooth. They're, it's very hard to go wrong with them. Or something like Gat yellows, Milky Gateron yellows, also very good. Like I mean, similar to these, like these KS3 Milky Yellow Pro switches are also very nice. Or just even standard Gateron yellows are also very nice. There's quite a lot of options, but uh, yeah. Gat yellows never lost, yeah. I mean, they've been around for a while too, and I mean, they've just gotten better <laughs> over time too. So, no complaints myself about Gadron linear switches in general. I haven't really had too many issues with them. I mean, there's like a lot of newer stuff, like there's Oil Kings and Gadron CJs, uh, which are pretty smooth variants. There's the Cap Yellows as well, or Cap Browns if you want some light tactility. Uh, 
any best place to purchase uh, you can purchase from any of my sponsors if you would like to support the channel as well while you do um, so purchasing from like can keys or novel keys um, kinetic labs etc will do uh, but other than that there's quite a lot of stores honestly there's so many um, there's like you know there's there's like dog keys there's the kibo there's the mini key i mean actually it depends what region you're in actually i'm not sure what region you are in right now so i wouldn't know if you're in other regions there there's local vendors there too Ohio meetup Saturday going to be fun. Oh, very nice. I didn't know that that was that was happening already See ya. Good luck with build. Oh one drunk man See you later Uh, Akron think there might be a one in Columbus. Yeah, so there's I know that there's Columbus meetup every year, too Anyone excited for Hamon round two? I am excited about it. Although, although I do have Hamon round one So I'll have to look at the kidding and see if I want anything specifically Extras for Palmetto will be via raffle next Friday. Oh very nice and so next Friday you guys if you like this board Today you'll have a chance to get a you know not this specific board but other units, uh, different color probably. Uh, some of the extras from from the pre-order that they did. All right. Hey, GZ, thank you so much for 13 months. Thank you, thank you. Okay, spacebar sounds pretty good. Maybe just a teeny bit on the right of the enter, actually. And on the right of the backspace too, actually. Okay, that's pretty typical cherry. Sound. New York meetup when there was a very small like private-ish New York meetup uh, like um, was it late last year actually I don't remember when it was it was a, while, a little while ago but um, I think right I think New York tends to be a little bit uh, they try to be a little bit more careful about that kind of stuff. So uh, I imagine we might actually see a meetup maybe like later this year uh, Maybe closer to the summer um, But there is a New York City mechanical keyboards discord uh, So if you join there you can also ask around if people are willing to you know organ help organize or something like that So many whales in New York though, five people can bring a ton of boards. Um, I mean, you can just say like bring two boards max or something like that. It's pretty simple. It's not like it's that hard to do that. To say like, oh, limited table space. So, you know, just bring one or two or whatever. Okay, that sounds good to me. Looking at the CV planet, 
would like to know the difference between 5052 over 6061 alu plate. Um, I mean, if I recall correctly, it's only important for like anodizing and finishing, correct? I mean, in fact, if Van Dusen's in chat, Van Dusen could probably answer that question better than I could. Because, I mean, they manufacture, I don't. I might be in your city next weekend. Oh, Captain Mike, are you? What are you What are you doing here? How long are you going to be around? I mean, if you want to grab some food or something, or if you want to... I mean, I, I don't know. We'll see <laughs> if I'm busy or not. But I mean, yeah, if you're, if you're around, let me know. Yeah, it's mostly for manufacturing purposes. Yeah, 5052 is more readily available in thin sheet material. Oh, I see. So, so it's kind of like you could say that you know it might be more readily available for applications like yeah, like plates or something. But, but that said, right? I think people in the community are. I personally think it's like speculation, or it's essentially like poorly educated guesses almost, where they kind of there's like this make believe. And people are like, oh, like, you know, this grade of aluminum feels and sounds different to me. But I can swear to God, it's not different. <laughs> um, at least I haven't done like a one-to-one -one A-B test, right? Like basically a one-to-one -one test would be having same switches, same case, same conditions, everything, right? It's like same place where you put the board, same... Like if you're recording it, same exact mic position. Like you have to do it all at the same time, um, or all have have everything in the same like in the same condition, right? And the, and then having like you know two different plates, one made out of this, one made out of that, um, and then doing a test and saying like, oh, is this actually different? Um, that would be the best way to test something like that. But uh, unless you do that, like it's, I think I personally just don't believe it that people people can actually perceive any like any difference between like 6 series and 5 series aluminum right there's a meetup being planned for Connecticut down near New York City but not sure what month April May or something oh interesting Connecticut huh I haven't been to Connecticut in so long now that I think about it I have not been to Connecticut in a while. I did live in Connecticut for like three and a half years. So, and I used to visit Connecticut a lot because that's where um, I went to school. But uh, yeah, I haven't I haven't been there since basically uh, people that I, that I knew there left. Um, and also I stopped living there, so. It's a rather quick build because it is a 60% so it is much easier to there are I mean there are at least one fewer stab here and then also you know fewer switches in general so it is a little bit of a quicker build and we don't have a <laughs> exceedingly tight plate like I did on my last build that one was a little iffy because of the, of the uh, radius of the corner radius of the plate had had trouble with the switches and the PCB too had a uh, smaller smaller um, holes for the for the uh, five pin um, mounting.
Should I send you my Hyper 7 to build if this is too quick? I mean, if you're paying for the build, sure. I'll charge accordingly. <laughs> Some exciting news for me. I recently picked up Magical by Junko Ohashi recently. Now I have to wait for it to ship. Oh, very nice. That's exciting. That's very pog. Okay. I think it looks good to me. So let's go with it. Um, let's solder. Business, yes, indeed, business time. All right, so let's. <clears throat> Maybe I'll do those ten push-ups while this soldering iron is heating up. Actually, it pretty much heats up right away. But maybe I'll just do them now because I have to be sitting for for the for this part anyway. I owe ten point ten push-ups to Giorin. If Giorin's still in chat. Uh, Here's those push-ups that I owe you. Oh, you missed one? Oh, did I? Okay. I'll do two, just in case I missed my form. I'm kidding, it's okay. It's just exercise. Got baited. It's okay. <sighs> All right. So let's start soldering. Sorry I'm late, we shitting on Rue? Oh yes, bad take Rue. <laughs> How are you doing? Oh, uh, Mason Gray, I got your, um, I got the mail. So you need not worry about any delivery issues. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. It was very fast. Yeah, um, so sometimes when I get stuff from the west coast they take the express route or something i guess they just hop on the next plane available or something and sometimes stuff from the west coast takes a while and sometimes it pretty much takes like two days so it just varies each time but we got lucky oh caffeine connoisseur hello i'll i'll hydrate uh maybe after the soldering is done. They have a wormhole out there in the west coast? Yeah, I mean. Maybe that's where all the that's where all the rain is going cuz west coast is on a drought all the time. Which is pretty sad. Please, please take some humidity from here, please. Like, can you can you take some of the humid summer part of it? Uh, and like, yeah, take our snow. It's fine. I don't care about the snow. Take it all. Yeah, please, please take it. I don't mind if it's a little drier here.
Oh, thanks, Joran. Any Palmetto building tips? Mm hmm. I have a few tips. First of all, for your through hole soldering, I do recommend using a chisel tip, like a slight chisel tip for your soldering iron. It's pretty nice if you have one of those soldering irons that can have a replaceable tip for the iron. I mean, the, st the stock one, the standard one, is fine. They're like the pointy ones, conical ones. But chisel tip actually is pretty nice in heat transfer for for through hole soldering. It's very easy. Um, so I do recommend like if you have that available using that. But uh, that's not specific to the palmetto anyway. Uh, but for the palmetto, you know, obviously just always use clipping stabs in my opinion. Just if you're gonna have to use clipping stabs anyway, just 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 buy a set of clipping stabs and use that for your build. Uh, know that you can also swap your o-ring if you wanted a different typing experience you can have half plates and full plates of all kinds of materials yeah wait a little and climate change will do it for you true Anyway, just wanted to say thanks to Van Dusen and Arslock from Carolina Mech for sending this unit out. I mean, it is an honor for me to build this, and more importantly, it's for a good cause. Hopefully, the person who um, wins this in the auction that's currently live, if you do exclamation auction, there's an eBay link uh, where the auction for this particular board is taking place. So. Uh, hopefully the person who wins this um, likes the board uh, once it's built, um, you know, obviously if not, um, well, they, they can always swap the build out pretty easily. Um, but yeah, um, thank you to everyone who has been tuning in though. It's good to see... Uh, Good to see the community around for things like these. Or they could send it back for a rebuild. I guess so, yeah. I'm gonna wait a year for 150k channel points to make lightning do 100 push ups. I don't, I cannot do 100 push ups. I can do like 40. Yeah, barely. <laughs> Like like straight like yeah like forty something maybe that's that's probably pushing it because I kind of suck at them but I mean I could try uh, last time I tried doing as many as I could yeah I don't remember how many it was but it was not close to a hundred <laughs> it was not close to a hundred body weight exercise is actually kind of hard. I mean, is it even the body weight exercise? I guess so. It's just a core exercise, but yeah. Pacer test redeem one. <laughs> hey Diego, what keycaps will go on this board for a type test? I'm I'm actually not sure yet. Um, I mean, I, I did provide a few options that are available. Like there's like GMK Nautilus, CRP Arabic, GMK Lux. Uh, we also have like I have oh I have I don't have classic blue but it's basically the the predecessor of classic blue which is LZ blue on white um, with the blue mods basically it's, I mean it's essentially the same exact same colors as uh, Jim K classic blue that's why I actually did not purchase classic blue uh, when it ran first although I do think I probably want to get a set of classic blue because it's like 
has modern kitting essentially. Uh, but I, I haven't I haven't gone to pick one up yet. Um, what else? What other options do we have for blue? I mean, there's like Calm Devs and Space Cadet, which we used in recent builds. Um, blue, blue. Yeah, there's a bunch. Uh, I, I'll check what other blue tone sets I have. I, I should have a couple more. Oh, I do have like blue blings, like the like the like the EPBT blue blings that um that CFO ran a while back now. I have those as well. Voyage. I actually don't have Voyage despite having the 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 dust mat. <laughs> I like the death mat, so I purchased the death mat, but I did not purchase the key set because I was actually uh, out of funds too. So yeah, I was trying to be responsible, and I was like, oh, I don't think I'm gonna get this set, even though I do like it. And then aftermarket, I don't really want to pay aftermarket prices to be honest, so I just kind of gave up on it. CRP Blue Hebrew? Oh, I do have CRP Blue Hebrew. I actually need to check check where it is. Drac might look good too. Oh yeah, Dracula would look pretty interesting with this because it has this bluish gray tone to it. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, there's a lot of possible sets with a with a board of this color. I do think beige with blue subs will, will go really nicely. Pay to win like everything else I do. How many kidneys though? How many kidneys? All right, let me just double check my soldering here that I don't have any cold joints or anything like that. Looks fine. It's a bit always looks a little little less pretty in my opinion when the pads are the bigger Alps MX pads. They make the joints look a little kind of spread out so they don't really form this like cleaner conical shape around the pin. But yeah, this is good. Okay. All right, CRP Hebrew though. I need to I need to look for it. Let me let me go check where it is. I am pretty sure I have it. I probably have it where my where I put my where I put my K Mac. I think was this named after the Palmetto plant or something else? I actually don't know. <laughs> Even if you asked me, actually I'm not sure. But the creators of the board um are here. I think that the that's a South Carolina state plant. Oh, then it is. Yes. Then then if that's the case, then yes, it was absolutely <laughs> after the plant. I actually don't know that. So uh, we're gonna do uh, CRP Blue Hebrew because Mason redeemed for it. All right. Let's uh, first test the PCB that it works. Just ignore Mason. He but he used channel points like a responsible Twitch user viewer and I need to respect that. Well actually I don't always respect those decisions because let's be honest, some people have terrible, terrible opinions. But I actually think his opinion is actually not bad at all. All right, so uh, everything's working. I actually do need to go look for the key set. So if you guys will excuse me, I, I shall be right back in just a few moments. Mason opinions are meta, true, understandable. All right, I'll be right back.
All right, I found my set of CRP Hebrew Blue Round 1. All right, what is this? Numpad pieces, space bars, uh, random stuff. Oh, is this by Rose? I think this is currently uh, by Rose. Let's see. Oh, never mind. I probably have most of it here. Okay. All right, let's first um, put this together. So um, let's first uh, put the daughter board on. That's the first step here. So it looks like there are some screws here, which are Sarah coated in blue as well, so maybe I'll use these. Although I'm not sure, should I be using these? Yeah, I think it's fine. There's also fresh screws in the bag. Yeah, I know. I was just kind of one. I was thinking to myself whether I should use the blue ones to match it, sort of like to keep it matched I don't think it matters but yeah 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 I figured that was why you had them on there which is also why I'm blowing air on it just in case there was dust yeah no I think these are fine These are perfectly fine. All right. Uh, do I wanna have the weight out? Hmm, maybe I do. Let me actually also tuck this in a little further. And then have this. Let's give it a little bit more slack and tuck it into the channel. Very nice. This I remember the first the first prototype we had a uh, we had a very tight space, but this this is perfectly sized now. It's it's very nice. Um, so yeah, that's pretty that's really good. All right. Oh, actually, I don't think I need to do undo anything. So just plug it right in and. Put our put our board on here. I, as I I, I, str I struggle as I say that, of course. <clears throat> um, just went in. Why did it come out? There we go. All right. Oh, I forgot to do toothpick mod, didn't I? I was just gonna do I was gonna do that earlier, but I actually just briefly forgot about that. Let me get some toothpicks. For those who don't know what toothpick mod is, is just to prevent, it's just to prevent the clip-in stabs from popping out whenever you're um, taking out like keycaps and so on. You're basically preventing the clip from compressing and letting the stabilizer come out. Yeah. A little handy trick that's been around for a while actually. OK. 
Okay. Now it's actually time to put this in into the case. Okay, let's put these keycaps on. Let's see what we have here. Or here I have our 7U. Hopefully this works. Okay, nice. I'll need that. This is your second palmetto that I've built? Yeah. Because I didn't get one from the group buy, so. And I don't think anybody who uh, specifically got one has sent one to build. So yeah, it would be my second one since the prototype. Just in case, check me if I missed anything, but yeah, I think that's it. Okay, cool. Cool, cool. Is this CRP? Yes, it is. It is CRP Hebrew Blue Round 1. And now we can put this... A very nice titanium cap on escape. Ah, very nice, very nice. I find DCS Delphor uh, would also look good on a board this color. Oh yeah, for sure, absolutely, absolutely would look good on a on a board of this color. All right, so let's give this a try.
I heard the CRP caps are on par. I mean, the 21 KB caps are on par with the CRP. Uh, I actually don't know yet because I actually haven't gotten them. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think I, I'm kind of waiting to find out uh, until I get like a set of the 21 KB caps. I actually just haven't gotten any. <sighs> All right. There we have it. Very nice. Let's get the music out of the way. All right. So music is off. Maybe I'll turn on this, turn off this fan rather. And then just double check here. Okay. And get the typing test up. Oh, the auction is at 1375 now. Wow. Wow, that's amazing. I'm actually gonna fix that. So it it is now at 1375 US dollars. Thank you for the to the generous, very, very generous people who are um contributing towards towards the bid. All right. Here we go. So tonight we have a very special board. This is the Palmetto um, from Carolina Mech and Van Dusen Manufacturing. Um, this is a one of one built with Gadron uh, Milky Pro Yellow switches. These are looped with 205 grade zero. And um, uh, uh, right now the switches are mounted on a full aluminum plate. Uh, the keycaps right now are CRP Hebrew round one from Hammerworks. Um, these obviously these caps are not the ones that are going to be going out with the board, uh, but the winner of the auction will will be getting this board built already and with this particular 3D printed titanium keycap that's been anodized and clear coated. So here we go for some typing. Ooh, 132, very close uh, for the two guesses over the year. Uh, but very nice, actually very, I'm a big fan of the sound and feel of the Gadron switches, just in general, I'm, I've always been a fan of them. Uh, but these sound very nice, kind of creamy, <laughs> if one shall say. Um, and I think in particular with the PVT, it goes really nicely, uh, like sounds crisp. Uh, I'm sure with ABS, it would also sound pretty, pretty nice. Uh, maybe a little bit more poppy, perhaps like a like a like a brighter sort of sound, or maybe even a deeper sound, but kind of like a, with a little bit more pop. Um, but yeah, <laughs> creamy manka s. That's right. We can listen to the mods and the rest of the keys here. Uh, again, this is a full aluminum plate. Okay, so here are the rest of the keys and.
there it is. There is our there's our palmetto. What do you guys think? Sounds really nice. I actually really like it. Um, I don't hear any kind of resonance in the case. Overall, each row kind of has its like you know unique row. Each like you know sound by row, which is normal. But overall, it sounds really good. It just sounds solid. Uh, the stabs came out great, I think, uh, with these uh, cherry clip-ins. So pretty nice build. Uh, hopefully, uh, the winner of the auction will enjoy the board. Um, as much um, I do really like it uh, but yeah I can type in maybe one more time and I'll show it off how about that all right so just one more typing test and we will I'll just show it off and yeah show you guys what it looks like and yeah Yeah, that sounds good. That sounds really nice. Um, yeah, Arslock, no problem. Auction ends on Monday, roger that. So it will be open all weekend, so for those who are considering the board, um, this is pretty much what it sounds like. Uh, uh, so you, just so you know, Arslock and Van Dusen, I'll leave the Twitch VOD up for the next day, 24 hours, uh, after the stream is over, and then it's gonna be on YouTube after that, so it won't be on Twitch, so you can like, Tell people like if they want to see it right away, it's gonna be on Twitch, and if you don't see it on Twitch, it's already on YouTube. Just so you know. What O ring? Um, I actually don't know. Uh, if you want to answer that question, Arslock, what uh O ring you're using for this? Seventy A. So on the more rigid side, higher higher do roll. All right. How sheesh is the palmetto? I think. I think this is bussin' bussin'. On guard, respectfully, sheesh! Just like that. It's, it's bussin' for sure. Yeah, no, this is very, really good. It sounds great. I think it sounds probably... This current build <laughs> probably sounds better than my current... Uh, it's all my 60% builds for myself. <laughs> Man, I need to get some gat milky yellows. Yeah, no, these are nice. These switches are really nice. Made in USA keyboard, that's right. Kona. Where's Mr. Konako to, to see a made in USA board? And, and and guys, this is a made in USA uh, uh, cable, okay? Made in USA, huh? Huh? Made in USA, right here. Made in USA. Made in USA. All a lot of these things were made in USA, okay? Proud. Made in USA. Okay, that's Matt's not made in USA, but it's okay. Not made in USA. I'm not made in USA. Um, unfortunately, um, I'm 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 made in the country down below. Um, but yeah. Yeah, the, the other country that people don't normally know about uh, when it's, uh, uh, when people talk about like NAFTA, they're like, Mexico is part of North America? Huh? Yeah, that happens a lot. I've, I've heard that a lot, actually. <laughs> All right. South Kona land, that's right. 
Okay. So let's show off the board. Here's our Palmetto from Carolina Mech and Van Dusen. Cerakoted blue, gorgeous blue actually. Uh, I'm actually kind of curious, is this color a stock Cerakote color? Like one of the, you know, like the ones on their catalog? Because I really like, I really like this tone of blue. I really, really like it. Matches the Hebrew blue perfectly too. And actually I do like the contrast on the keycap. The contrast like because it's a little darker and it looks good against the beige here. But yeah, this looks really nice. It's called NRA blue, I see. And here is our side profile. Look at this, look at this side profile guys. Can I preach again? Guys, row five, look how nice that looks. One, two, three, four, five. Look at that sweet curve, matching the curves down the bottom. Why the why the F does the spacebar not match? Because the spacebar does not have row profile associated with it. That's where people go wrong. But yes, row, row five, guys. Row five is the best. Look, anyway, check out the back here. Very nice, the recessed USB port, super nice. The, the, the machining marks here look really, really nice, really, really clean. Um, here's the Palmetto weight with the coat of arms, um, the Ukrainian coat of arms, and also says Carolina Mech and Van Dusen. Too bad they decided they did not decide to add a Lightning Keywords logo right there. Should've, should've had a Lightning Keywords logo right there. Just kidding. Just kidding, just kidding. It doesn't deserve to be there. L Lightning Keywords, imagine. Im imagine, who's, who is Lightning Keywords? <laughs> you just wait, no, it's, it's, it's all good. But yeah, anyway, so th this keycap also looks spectacular. Uh, you did a great job. I I don't know, Van Dusen, like you, you said like, oh, I kind of didn't like it. I'm like, it looks nice. <laughs> It looks nice, and it also conforms to profile perfectly fine. It mounts fine, so yeah, this keycap looks great. IMO. I only know Rayito Onse. <laughs> Don't need R5 when you have 10 U spacebar, but you can have R5 on the on those uh, 1.5 U keys that you got left. <laughs> Uh, extra previews, please. Thank you so much for the two months. Thank you, thank you so much. I only know Miyago Eleven. Uh, Drew, do you see my respond? My response to your comment that you left on my on my channel, like it. I don't even know in the middle of the night. I was like, I I, I actually like woke up for water. <laughs> I was like, what the hell, Drew? It's so late. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I'll respond in the morning. <laughs> oh, Jordan, thank you so much for gifting a tier one sub to Van Dusen, fellow Mazak user. Mazak. Is it just me or does the space were not match in color, sir? It looks the same to me. Um, just wasn't super happy with the two tone anno. I guess that makes sense. You have certain standards, for sure. But this combo is very nice. Anyway, thoughts on the Omnitype FedEx fiasco? Um, I mean, it's FedEx's fault, but I don't think FedEx is going to do too much. The problem here is this, right? For the FedEx thing, the incident, is that even if FedEx said, okay, here's the money, the problem is the money, like what? I mean, it might, might go to remaking caps or something, but that, that's going to take so long again because it's so many keycap sets. So it's not like they can easily do that. So it's a you know it's a problem that they hopefully solve for the future. But at this point, yeah, those all those mushy wet sets from from the rain, like those they'll have to somehow bag them or something, sell them for cheaper. I don't know. They're gonna have to do something about it. But it sucks for Omnitype. It sucks for Omnitype and GMK in general. I mean, well, GMK actually doesn't need. They're not even affected because they already got paid for it. So. They're not gonna do much, I think, either, because it's not the, yeah, it's not, it's, 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 it's not even. I don't even think it's, per, I don't, I don't really think it's GMK's fault in this case. Well, actually, they don't really. I think they should send out crates or 
um, like pack the palettes differently. It's also the material that's a problem with those palettes, with those GMK sets, like the materials, the trace kind of suck. We know that, I know that. Um, there's an exclamation GMK trace command that kind of explains why I don't like them. Or what I think of them rather. Were the keycaps affected? No, just the just the anything made out of like paper that can like disintegrate from getting wet. So like the band roll, the the tray. But the keycaps should be fine. I'm pretty sure the keycaps are just fine. And it's just water. Yeah. And I don't think it was like that long. It was probably like overnight. Yeah. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the caps are fine, but it's gonna be a pain in the butt because they're gonna yeah they're gonna have to go one by one. Because now that the, those trays have basically gotten wet and disintegrated, all the caps are everywhere. They might have scratched. And, you know, you don't know. You don't know that. It, it just sucks. Uh, what happened? Oh, we're just talking about uh, Omni Type's most recent like um, tweet story, whatever, about packaging uh, about FedEx leaving one of their pallets out in the rain. Um, but yeah. Anyway, this palmetto. I really like it. I really like this blue. I think I'm gonna maybe I should consider like a Cerakote for for a board. This blue is super nice, or something like something similar. I don't know, but this blue is sick. Absolutely sick. I think the worst that could have happened is that they got smushed. Some caps might be scratched. Yeah, that would be the worst case scenario for sure. If like caps also got damaged in the process. Anyway. I need an O-ring 60, you should get one. I mean, now they're pretty accessible too with the Bakaneko and all the little variants as well. I mean, but of course you have the chance to get a Palmetto actually, if you participate in the extra sale next week in eight days. On March 18, there's gonna be a, there's gonna be a sale for these. So you could, so you can maybe participate for that. That's your chance to get one. If you have the funds, of course. But yeah, no, this is, this is sweet. I was thinking of trying for a great corn. That'll be later in the year too. It's a little too soon for that as well. So how do you like it, Diego? Sorry, you just got back. Oh, I really like it. Uh, I was I was saying that the sound of it is really nice. It feels well. I mean, it's a full aluminum plate, so it doesn't feel that like soft or per, or bouncy or anything per se. It also has a 70A O-ring, which is on the on the on the less stretchy side of things for the for the o-ring so i mean it's like it feels more solid in that case but uh, it's still comfortable to type on like it definitely is a little stiffer but it's it's like the overall typing is like nice yeah i, I really like how it types right now I think I would consider doing like a half FR4 play if I wanted something really flexy or something, or half polycarb would be kind of nice. But it sounds A plus. Oh, what's the 65 above? Oh yeah, it's a Kohaku uh, prototype. Birthday coming up, so I don't think I have any funds. Oh, oh, girlfriend's birthday. I see. Uh, I see. I see. Opinion on half poly versus poly, like like full. Uh, I mean, go half if you want a more flexible kind of feel, like a bouncier or like just softer feel because you're basically typing against less material. But the difference is not huge because polycarb is also already a flexible and softer material, you know? So yeah, I mean, go half if you really want to exacerbate that on the alphas, on your main, um, you know, on the, on the main cluster, rather. Depends on the board? Yeah, I think it depends on the board for sure. I mean, of course you should consider that given what switches you might want to use, the board you might want to use, you know, that kind of stuff for sure. Looks like I arrived right at the end. What do you loop the cat yellows with? I loop these with two five grade zero pretty lightly. Um, they're very smooth. Like they were already pretty smooth um, stock, but uh, I think with just the right amount of two five, it like really, it really takes the typing um, 
to a very nice and consistent smoothness. So I really like how these feel right now. And sound as well. You know, it also sounds really nice. That's horrible? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sure they did not have a have a fun day today. Moldy Jim K Trace, oh gosh. Yeah, that's like that's like tens of thousands of dollars loss, basically. Oh, it's pretty crazy. Good time for interns. Oh boy. Uh, I guess you get um over overpay uh overtime pay. <laughs> Um, yeah, I don't know. It's crazy. Alright, caps should be fine, I think. Thoughts on black inks versus black milky tops? They are different extra previous plays. Um, inks are just generally a different, like, line of switches. So you should kind of consider them separate from milky top gat runs. Um, yeah, they just sound different. Uh, but they're both pretty smooth. Uh, and like weight wise, I think they're similar, but you can always spring swap. So you have the option to spring swap anytime, so I don't think that's a huge concern. Yeah. I mean, one is, I, I think, I think Milky Tops are probably much cheaper than Inks though. But both of them are great switches, and I, I know a lot of people who love them both. Um, have both trying to decide from a hero, I see. Yeah, got a goals. Thanks for the stream. No problem, Jack. No, thank you so much for stopping by tonight. Gonna take a lot of work down package all those caps. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's the that's the real pain. It's like you can't waste those keycaps either. They waited a year and a half to get them, you know? A year and four months or whatever to get them. It's it's huge. It's uh, it sucks. It just sucks. Was sound test already done? Yeah, we did. Although, you know, like, I can just do like. I mean that's uh, I know that the music's on I know I know all that but just just to show you but I mean the Twitch VOD is available right now so you can always go back on the VOD and check out the actual typing test part of it I did it twice so yeah wondering if FedEx will compensate my opinion probably not maybe but even if they did it's not gonna change the outcome that they face right now, which is a lot of work. That's the part that's gonna suck for them. Like They just have a lot of work set out for them. Yeah, so, yep, yep. Okay, friends, well, um, I think I will conclude here for tonight. Um, let's see um, who is currently streaming, but once again, I wanna thank Van Dusen and Carolina Mech for sending this beautiful board out. Really gorgeous, and I hope that whoever wins this board in the auction, uh, which is currently on eBay, uh, you can do exclamation auction to get the link. Um, and it ends on Monday, I believe. There's like three and a half days or so still left to the auction. But uh, whoever wins this, I hope they are happy with it, and it, it's going to a good cause. Uh, so all, the, all the proceeds are going to Nova Ukraine. Uh, if you don't know about Nova Ukraine, um, I can tell you a little bit. I did a little background research. Basically, it's a nonprofit. Uh, they're based in the U.S. actually, uh, but you know there was a recently formed um, a nonprofit organization uh, that's dedicated to raising awareness of Ukraine about Ukraine in the United States. And also, currently, they have a lot of different humanitarian aid projects. Um, 
uh, which are actually there's uh, like a lot of different projects where like they're allocating their funds and basically um, if you're donating to Nova Ukraine it's going to this general fund and then it gets split up to different purposes like you know might be like shelter provision or like supplies for you know like women and kids things like that um, for, for the cu current um, Russia uh, Ukrainian conflict so yeah so that's where the money is going but um once again thank you thank you everyone for stopping by let's go check who is um streaming and we can give them a raid yeah it's really nice to see like the community come together for for something like this it's, it's just very heartwarming mm, i see mr halloween boards I see Mr. Inomushiki, which is um, Frank. He is building a Sanga 65 and MG standard rebuild. Uh, we could re we could raid Mr. Frank, who, who always kindly comes by and says hi and whatnot. Uh, there's Danny Pop Designs. Uh, they're doing some Gravestone 40, which I actually don't know what the keyword looks like, but I assume it's like a smaller board. Yeah, your choice though. And then there's a few non-keyboard people. Uh, I mean, Xuanxing Wang, uh, Patty, she's doing raids on WoW. She's also a World of Warcraft streamer, um, officer, and a big guild. Uh, but she also does keyboard builds. Before you go, can you recommend a place where I can get a TKL carrying case? Um, I would check, check if Cannon Keys has any carrying cases. Check if... Um, Mikibo might have like TX bags. I'm not sure. Uh, and then you can lastly check. I don't think Omnitype has TKL bags. They, I think they might have only for 65%, which is a little bit small. Um, Monoke, uh, but the problem with Monoke is that they might have to ship from, you know, they ship from Singapore, so it might be costly, the Kaban. Uh, Mikibo, I believe, is proxy, I mean, has proxied those Kaban. Uh, you can also look at, um, is it, is it Apex keyboards, uh, in Canada, who is also proxying for Canada, for Kaban and stuff like that. Uh, you can also check with them. Uh, the good thing about sometimes ordering from Canada is that you won't get hit with taxes because, you know, you're buying from a Canadian vendor. Uh, and also shipping might not be that expensive. You, you know, you can try looking into it and see if they have any. And that's another option you might have, yeah. I think those are some of the options I know of right off the top of my head. Yeah. All right, let's go raid, um, let's go raid Mr. Frank, how about that? Raid Inomushiki. All right. Is, is is Frank singing anything these days? Does, does he still sing for people? He's a good singer. Um, all right, well. Please serenade us, Frank. We love you, karaoke boss. Miago Ubu, Miago uh, Heart. All right. Anyway, thanks again, guys. Here's the Palmetto for from tonight's stream. Let's go say hi to Mr. Frank. You know Moshiki. Uh, he's building a Sanga 65, um, so a 65% version of the Monster Gear board that I built a, a, a little while back. All right, friends, I'll see you guys on the next one. Um, and yeah, catch you guys later. Actually, it is technically my birthday this weekend, but I'm not streaming, I'm taking it off. So see ya, bye.